Hello everyone, this is Yohan and welcome to a new tutorial. In this episode, I would love to share my version of diaper bag or mommy bag or nappy bag. Although this can be pretty much a multi-purpose bag. You can use this as a weekender bag, as a work bag. You can take it for a day trip or for traveling. So it is a versatile bag indeed. The finished measurements of this bag are approximately 16 and a half inch at the widest point by 12 inches tall by five and a half inches deep. So it is quite a spacious bag. It comes with many pockets. There are two pockets at the front, also two elasticated side pockets. And at the back here, there's a large pocket with magnetic snap closure. It comes with a zipper closure. And in the interior, there are two elasticated pockets and one zipper pocket as well. For the exterior of this bag, I use regular cotton quilting fabric. I also use vinyl or faux leather as the accent fabric also for the strap. For the lining of this bag, this time I used the PUL fabric. PUL stands for polyurethane laminate, which is essentially a waterproof fabric. I think great to be used for a diaper bag. Nonetheless, you can of course use all cotton quilting fabric or you can also use canvas, linen. So feel free to experiment with the kind of fabric that you desire. So let's jump straight into the tutorial and I hope you enjoy this video. Let's start by working on the exterior. These two are the main front and back exterior panels or what we're gonna call here panel A. Fuse the wrong side with interfacing. For this project, I use fusible fleece. And as usual, I cut the interfacing a slight smaller and center the position. Now let's work on the front pocket. Grab panel B or the pocket panels. So you want to cut one each from fabric one and fabric two. Apply fusible fleece on the wrong side of fabric one or the external fabric. Lay them right sides together just like that. And then sew along the top edges with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open. Now since the lining fabric is a PUL fabric which obviously has plastic in it, so I'm not going to press this with an iron, but rather finger press or using hair marker. Now let's fold these wrong sides together. And then go ahead and top stitch. And while I'm top stitching, you can see me constantly pushing the lining fabric to be tucked all the way underneath. Once you've done top stitching, you wanna sew the sides and the bottom with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Lay the pocket panel on the right side of panel A, aligning the sides and the bottom. Now let's secure this in place with some sewing clips. We're gonna divide this pocket into two slots. You may refer to this diagram for the stitching line. Essentially, you wanna draw two parallel lines right on the center, about quarter of an inch apart, and then connect these lines on the top where the top stitching line is. So as you sew from the bottom all the way up to the top, you wanna stop right on the top stitching line and then pivot, and then stitch to get to the next line, and then pivot again. Now you want to stitch all the way to the bottom and then continue to the bottom and the side edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And there you go. So you should end up with two lovely generous size front pockets. Now let's work on the back exterior pocket. The panel pieces are the same measurements as the front exterior pocket. Also you want to apply some fusible fleece to the wrong side of the pocket exterior. On the right side of the pocket interior panel, we're gonna attach the male magnetic snap closure. So you wanna go ahead and mark down one and a quarter inch from the top edge right on the center. And on the wrong side, you wanna apply a little bit of fusible fleece or batting or any interfacing just to stabilize this area. Now, if you use this kind of PUL fabric, you may not want to fuse this with iron, but rather apply basting spray or fabric basting glue just to hold this in place temporarily. So let's install the male magnetic snap closure on the one and a quarter inch mark. And once you've done that, you want to lay the pocket exterior and interior right sides together. And then sew along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to turn this to the right side, of course, press the seams, and then top stitch. 
Now you want to stitch the sides and the bottom with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Lay the pocket panel on top of the panel A. And then you want to assess the position for the female magnetic snap closure. With your fabric marker, you want to mark where the hook of the male magnetic snap is sitting on the panel A or the back exterior panel. And then install the female magnetic snap closure on that mark. Now you want to lay the pocket panel back on the right side, matching the magnetic snap closure, and then stitch along the sides and the bottom with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And that's it, our back exterior panel is done. Now let's prepare panel D or the side and the bottom panels. So you want to cut up three rectangles from the vinyl fabric. You may use cotton quilting fabric if you wish to. In that case, of course, you will need to interface these panels. Use your desired interfacing. You may use the same fusible fleece for softer back, or you may use foam stabilizer, which I highly recommend, so that you can add a little structure to your back. I am pretty happy with the weight and the thickness of this vinyl fabric, so I am not going to add any sort of interfacing to these panels. Now we're gonna work on the side pockets. So go ahead and prepare panel E. So you wanna cut two pieces each from the main and the lining fabric. Fuse the wrong side of the main fabrics with fusible woven interfacing. Lay the exterior and the lining panel right sides together and then stitch along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams and then fold wrong sides together just like so. And then sew 3 8 of an inch from the top edges to create the elastic casing. Now you want to cut a piece of elastic about 6 and a half inch long. And you may use an 8 of an inch or quarter of an inch wide elastic. Use a small safety pin to help you fit the elastic through the casing. Meanwhile, you want to pay attention to the other end of the elastic. As it approaches the casing, you want to make sure to hold this in place with a clip or pin. And then continue on feeding your elastic until you get to the other end of the casing. Unhook the safety pin and then clip to secure the end of the elastic. Now you want to sew the edges of the casing about quarter of an inch to secure the elastic in place. When you are removing the clip, just make sure to hold on to elastic with your finger so you won't lose it. And then stitch back and forth a couple of times to make sure that the elastic is secured inside the casing. Once you've secured both ends of the elastic, you want to base stitch the sides and the bottom with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Lay the pocket panel on the right side of the side panel. Aligning the bottom edges, first we're going to secure the top side edges of the pocket, just like that. And then we're going to secure the side edges. When you do this, you want to push the pocket fabric so that it will be aligned with the edges of the side panel. Next, we're going to work on the bottom edges, since obviously there is some excess fabric there. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a couple of pleats. So measure about a couple of inches from the side, and then make a little pleat about quarter of an inch towards the side and then secure with clip and then you want to work the same on the opposite side again about a couple of inches from the side edges you want to pinch about quarter of an inch towards the side or until the fabric is even and then secure with a clip after that we're going to stitch all around with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and there you go. So you want to work the exact same way for the other side panel. And before you stitch the pocket in place, just lay them side by side and make sure that the height of these pockets are identical. And voila, the side panels are done. Now we're going to work on the D-ring tabs for the adjustable strap. Cut four little rectangles, lay two of these right sides together. So all around with quarter of an inch of seam allowance, leaving about 1 to 2 inches of opening to turn this piece inside out later. Now you want to clip all the corners. Be careful not to cut through the stitches. And then turn this inside out through the opening hole. Poke all the corners, make them nice and flat. Fold the raw edges of the opening towards the wrong side about quarter of an inch. And then you want to go ahead and press. And once you've done that, top stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Attach the D-ring, 
just like that and then stitch this in place with half an inch of seam allowance so you want to start sewing from where the top stitching line is and then stop also on the top stitching line mark the top center point of the side panel and then you want to position the d-ring tab just like that so the top edge of the d-ring should be aligned with the top edge of the side panel now i'm going to apply a little bit of fabric basting glue to hold this temporarily and then we're gonna stitch this in place make a little rectangle about half an inch wide simply follow the already existing seam line so it's super simple you may want to stitch this around twice to ensure extra bond alternatively you may also install a rivet instead install the rivet about 3 8 of an inch from the bottom edge or you may do both so stitch it first and then add the rivet afterwards just like what i did here next we're gonna work on adhering tabs for the shoulder straps cut four little rectangles measuring four inch by three inch for these ones we're gonna do the typical folding and pressing method start by folding the long sides in half just like that and then press and then fold the short sides towards the center fold and then press and then fold one more time in half and then press so you should end up with a one inch wide strip now sew along the edges with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance now attach the d-ring just like that and then stitch along the edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance now let's work on the shoulder strap so i'm going to make the two-sided strap so you will need to cut two fabric strips each from the vinyl and the main fabric on the wrong side of the vinyl fabric you want to draw a line right on the center so simply measure one inch and then draw a line with your fabric marker fold the edges towards the center and then clip and then stitch right along the edges about 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance and you should end up with something like this repeat the same to the opposite side and your strap should look just like this for the reverse side of the strap you want to first fold the short sides of the fabric towards the wrong side about half an inch and then press fold the strip in half lengthwise and then press and then fold the side edges towards the center fold and then press now we're gonna lay the strips wrong sides together just like that center the position of the fabric one obviously this was cut a slight smaller I'm gonna apply a little bit of fabric basting glue just to hold this in place you may also simply use sewing clips once everything is secured go ahead and stitch along the side edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance and there you go now I'm going to bury this excess thread that are sticking out since obviously when working with vinyl or foliar fabric we're not supposed to back stitch where it's obvious now we're gonna attach the d-ring tabs to the strap Feed one of the end of the strap through the d-ring just like so have about one and a half inch of clearance there hold this in place with a clip and then we're going to install a couple of rivets to secure the strap so you want to install the first rivet about three eight of an inch from the end of the strap of course you want to center the position now you may stop at one rivet or you can add one more in that case you want to space the second rivet about 3 8 of an inch from the first one so you want to repeat the same to the opposite end of the strap and you should end up with something like this and we're gonna do the exact same way for the second strap measure 3 inches from the side edges of your exterior panel so this one is my front exterior panel position the strap right on that 3 inches point mark so the side edges of the strap should be aligned with the 3 inch point mark and of course you want to position the strap with the right side facing down obviously the right side is the side with the vinyl fabric so you want to do the same to the other side and this is how it should look like now now sew the strap in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and there you go now you want to repeat the same to the back exterior for the crossbody or adjustable strap we're gonna work the main strap pretty much the same way as we did the shoulder strap so here i've already sewn my strap now i'm gonna go ahead and attach the hardware starting from the adjuster slider so let's feed the end of the strap from the wrong side up to the right side and back to the wrong side 
have about one and a half inch clearance there now you may stitch this in place or attach a rivet which is much easier so you want to install the rivet about half an inch from the edge now we're going to install the swivel hooks insert one of the swivel hook from the other end of the strap fit this end of the strap through the adjuster slider from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side and then pull the strap through now you want to insert the second swivel hook just like so again have about an inch and a half of clearance there and then install the rivet about half an inch from the edge and voila the adjustable strap is done now we're going to assemble the back exterior. Here I've got my front exterior and one of the side panel. So I'm going to lay them right sides together and then clip and then stitch with half an inch of seam allowance. Now let's sew the other side panel and we're going to maintain half an inch of seam allowance throughout the assembling of the back exterior. Now we're going to sew the back panel, so lay this right side down, aligning the side edges with one of the side panel. And then go ahead and clip and sew. And you should end up with something like this. Now let's sew the back panel to the other side panel. And your back should look just like this at this point. Next, we're going to attach the bottom panel. So first, I like to find the center point of the long side of the bottom panel. So I'm just going to fold this in half and then snip just a little bit and do this on both sides. I'm going to do the same with the back as well. So I'm folding this in half, aligning the side seams and then snip just a little bit, about quarter of an inch with my scissors and do the same to the opposite side. Now you want to position the bottom panel with the right side facing down and then first we're going to match the center point and then clip and do the same to the opposite side matching the center point. Now let's clip this all around. Once everything is secured go ahead and sew with half an inch of seam allowance. I like to start sewing around the center point area. I found it much easier if you sew one side at a time. Now as you get to the corner, don't worry so much about making it super perfect. Your goal is to get them all stitched through because you don't want any hole in your back. Alright, here I've already sewn my bottom panel. Now if you want to, you can turn this to the right side just to see how your progress is looking like so far. And I am loving mine already. Now we're going to work on the back interior. So these are panel F and panel G, which will be the main front and back interior panels. Fuse the wrong side of panel F with some fusible woven interfacing. Now we're going to sew panel F and G right sides together with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams and then top stitch. So you should end up with two identical panels that will be the front and the back of your back interior. Now we're going to work on the side panels. So these are panel H and panel I. Fuse the wrong side of panel H with fusible woven interfacing. So panel H and panel I right sides together with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams and then top stitch. Now you want to repeat the same to the other pieces. Next, we're going to work on the elasticated pocket. So lay your pocket panels right sides together and then stitch along the top and the bottom edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open. I'm just going to finger press this since I can't really iron this fabric. Turn the pocket to the right side. Press it again if you use regular fabric, you can use iron. I manually finger press these top edges and use some clips to hold this flat. To create the elastic casing, we're going to stitch the top edges with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now let's prepare the elastic. So you want to cut one about 13 and a half inch long. Before we thread the elastic, first you want to draw a line right on the center point of the pocket panel. So let's go ahead and thread the elastic pretty much the same way we did with the side pockets. Secure both ends of the elastic and then stitch them in place. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the front interior panel, about 4 inches down from the top edges. First, we're going to secure the top of the pocket. So go ahead and clip both sides and then stitch right on the center line. 
And once you've done that, we're gonna pleat the bottom of the pocket pretty much the same way as the side pocket as well. So about 2 inches from the center line, I'm going to make a little pleat about quarter of an inch towards the center. And then pin this in place. Now about 2 inches from the side, I'm going to go ahead and make a pleat towards the side until the edges are aligned. And then pin. Now we're going to align the side edges of the pocket with the side edges of the interior panel. And then pin or clip in place. Once everything is secured, let's go ahead and sew. Sew the sides with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and the bottom with an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Now let's work on the zipper pocket. As usual, we're going to first draw the zipper template on the wrong side of the pocket panel. So simply follow just like shown on the screen right now and you want to draw the template about an inch and a half down from the top edges. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the back interior panel with the right side facing down. Aligning the top edges of the pocket with the top stitching line over there. Now you want to pin them in place and then stitch right on the outer line of the template. Once you've done that, you want to cut the center line and the corner triangles as well. Of course, be careful not to cut through the stitches. Now turn the pocket panel to the wrong side. Apply some basting tape on the edges of the zipper. Position the zipper panel on top of the zipper with the zipper pull at your left hand side. And then sew the zipper in place. Trim the excess zipper if any. And then fold the bottom towards the top just like that. Secure them in place with some clips and then stitch the sides and the top edges with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And there you go, the zipper pocket is done. Once all the interior panels are done and ready to go, by the way here is the bottom base. We're gonna assemble the back interior pretty much the same way we did the back exterior. However, you wanna leave about 4 to 5 inches of opening at the bottom to turn the back inside out later. Next, we're gonna work on the zipper closure, so let's prepare the zipper panels. Now we're gonna fold and press each panel, just like this. Mm -hmm. So first, we're gonna fold the long sides towards the wrong side, about half an inch. You may wanna use sewing gauge because we want it to be pretty accurate. And then press. Repeat the same to the opposite side. Now you wanna fold the short sides towards the wrong side, also half an inch. And of course, do the same to the opposite side. And then you want to fold this in half lengthwise and then press. Once you fold and press both panels, you want to lay them side by side and quickly check to make sure that the length of these panels are identical. Now let's prepare the zipper. So we're going to use per size zipper and the length of the zipper should be at least 18 inches long. First, we're going to fold the extension tape at the start of the zipper. And then stitch along the edges just to hold this in place. And you should end up with something like this. Now you want to apply basting tape on the edges of the zipper tape. Starting from the start of the zipper down to the 15 inch point. So you don't have to go all the way. Only apply as the length of the zipper panel. Now you want to do the same on the wrong side of the zipper. Now you want to peel the top paper layer off. Insert the zipper tape into the fold of the zipper panel. So the zipper panel should be sort of hugging the zipper tape. Have about an eighth of an inch of distance between the edges of the zipper panel with the zipper teeth. This way the fabric from the zipper panel will not get caught when you are opening or closing the zipper. Once you're happy with the position of the zipper panel, you want to press this with your fingers so the fabric will be sticking to the basting tape. And then stitch the sides and the inner edges with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Start sewing about an eighth of an inch down from the top. I am comfortable using my walking foot for this, but if you prefer to use your zipper foot, feel free to do so. And there you go. Now we're gonna work the same way for the opposite side. And voila, your zipper panel should look just like this. Now we're going to work on the zipper tab, so go ahead and cut a little rectangle. Fold the short edges towards the wrong side about quarter of an inch and then press. Do the same to the opposite side. 
fold the long sides in half, right sides together just like so, and then press, and then stitch along the edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now you want to turn this inside out, poke the corners, make them nice and flat, and then you can go ahead and press this. Insert the end of the zipper into the zipper tab, all the way in, and then clip, and then stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And that's it, the zipper panel is done and ready to go. Next we need to determine the center point of the zipper panel, so go ahead and fold the zipper panel in half. And then with your disappearing fabric marker, you want to mark the center point on the right side of the panel and of course on both sides. Now we need to determine the center points of the front and back interior. So let's go ahead and fold this in half, meeting the side edges, just like that. And then mark the center point about an inch down from the top edge. And we're going to do the same on the opposite side. So this side where the elasticated pockets are sitting will be the front side of the interior, while this side where the zipper pocket is will be the back side of the interior. Now you want to lay the back interior with the zipper pocket or the back side facing further from you. Now take the zipper panel with the zipper pull at your left hand side. So this side will be facing the front and this side will be facing the back. Now you want to find the center points and match them. Position the zipper panel about an inch down from the top edge. So use your sewing gauge and then pin. Now let's unzip this to make it much easier. So let's pin the rest of this panel. Again maintaining the 1 inch distance from the top edge. Once everything is secured, go ahead and stitch along the top edges of the zipper panel with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. To add extra reinforcement to your zipper panel, make sure to backstitch a couple of times at the beginning and also towards the end of the sewing. Alright, so you should end up with something like this. Now we're going to repeat the exact same way for the opposite side. And this is how the zipper closure should look like. There you go. Now it's time to assemble the back. So first we're going to unzip the zipper all the way and then turn the interior panel right side out. Now you want to turn the exterior panel wrong side out. Now you want to insert the interior panel into the exterior panel. And of course you want to make sure that the front of the interior is facing the front of the exterior and the back of the interior is facing the back exterior. Now let's secure this in place with clips. I like to start by matching the side seams and then clip all around. Once everything is secured, you can sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance. We are almost done. Now let's turn the back inside out through the opening hole. Fold the row edges of the opening hole towards the wrong side, about half an inch, and then clip and then stitch along the edges to close the opening. Now let's place the lining back inside. Now we're gonna finish this back by top stitching all around the top edges with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so your bag is pretty much done at this point. Now you may attach the adjustable strap and voila! And that's all I have for you today guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye!